Hi, my name's uh, Luke Bradford. I'm a junior software engineer. I'm based in the Joburg office, and my tech stack is Flutter and Python. Okay, so today I'm going to be speaking about drones. Uh, first, what is a drone? A drone is just an uncrewed vehicle. Uh, most of the time, they take the form of uh, an aerial or something that flies, but they can come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, there's two types or two ways of controlling a drone. The first is it being remote operated. This means that a human is going to sit somewhere far away and control how the drone moves and how it operates uh, with, for example, in this uh, radio and uses radio waves. The next way is the drone being autonomous. This is more along the lines of uh, the drone making its own decisions on how to navigate how to complete its task. And also, there's two other, two other fields that it falls under for being autonomous. One is self-maintenance, so it being able to uh, recharge or refill itself. And the other is sensing the environment around it, so having a camera or some other type of sensor. Uh, I think most people have the idea of uh, these two drones, or when they think of drones. One is a UAV, or unmanned aerial vehicle, and the other is a multi-rotor drone. Now, I'm going to jump back a little bit uh, to the origins of drones. So this is a drone, a sense of a beehive, and I didn't know, but the worker bees that actually uh, do all the work, you know, fetch nectar, produce honey, they're not called drones. So I'm kind of uh, veering away from that and focusing on the worker bee side of things a little bit. One of the first recordings of a remote operated drone was in the 1930s. It was an airplane and they strapped a uh, radio receiver in there and controlled it. This is a little bit of an exaggeration, but the next slide is kind of how I interpret it. Uh, it wasn't a very like smart or logical way in how they did it. Right? It was a uh, radio wave gets received and it does something. So for example, throttle down, goes forward. Uh, as we progressed, this was the first step towards autonomy. This is an analog computer. So it's not like the ones that we know today. It's purely mechanical. Maybe not yet, but uh, one of the use cases for it in original or, or yeah, navigation wise for drones was there were gyroscopic sensors where the analog computer could take in multiple inputs and then decide on what output should be should be given. Uh, as we progressed, we Oh, computer technology increased and uh, processing power. And eventually we landed on microcontrollers, which was like the biggest leap forward in terms of uh, capabilities. They're relatively small and powerful, and they opened up a lot of opportunity for what we could do. The best way I can describe it is uh, it allowed us to abstract a lot more. So instead of uh, relying on you know just giving it basic inputs you could now abstract it into a i'm not going to use the command but you could give it a move to command and not worry about telling it where to turn uh and that type of thing the next so i've spoken about aerial drones mostly but uh, I'm going to switch to a different, a different thing now, the robot vacuum. Uh, so I feel like drones are a good way to show how technology's progressed and also like the way that we go about fixing a problem with software. In the robot vacuums case, we know today they're capable of mapping rooms, deciding what to clean, what parts. 
but the original drones or original vacuums had a way uh, dumber way of doing it. If it's stupid, but it works, it's not stupid approach. The dr uh, it wouldn't map anything. You'd place it in a room and it would go forward until it bumped into an object, then rotates a random amount of degrees and keep going. Okay, it didn't, it wasn't the most efficient way of doing it, but it got most of the job done. Yeah. Uh, the next way is, I think the term is uh, idiothetic. It's where there's no outward facing sensors that uh, the drone has. Everything it does is based purely on like it keeping track of itself. So this was one of the original mapping techniques where the drone would go forward as well until it hit a wall, it recorded uh, where that point was. And now because the drone is using its previous relative position to map what's going on through wheel rotations and which wheel was spinning, it can keep track of how far it moved and also what direction it's facing. So in this case, it hits a wall, uh, it records that point, it turns, and it hits, and when it hits another wall, it begins mapping or creating a basic map of what it thinks it's going to look like, and then goes about filling in the blanks. So eventually it'll be able to map the whole room. The next generation was, oh, uses uh, sensors and it's the allothetic approach. So now you give the drone the ability to see its surrounding area. Uh, the biggest problem that came with this, oh, it's a computational problem called uh, SLAM or simultaneous localization and mapping. It's just fancy for saying it needs an algorithm to uh, keep track of the device's position in an unknown environment while mapping it. Uh, now, the next phase, and I think it's just where everything's progressing, is uh, everything's beginning to use AI. And with drones, AI is, or well, the main field of uh, artificial intelligence in drones is image recognition and this is also mainly used in drones like pathfinding ability. So various objects can be avoided. Different paths can be chosen based on what the drone perceives. Uh, there are other applications of AI with drones, but they're more focused in assisting the drone complete its task. So for example, with the uh, robot vacuum, a model uh, could be used to make the mapping process more efficient or more accurate uh, in a you know, shorter time. Now, I'm gonna jump into a couple uh, examples of modern drones and their uses. Oh. So the first one, as you can see on the screen, is a self-driving car. Uh, it has a big LiDAR sensor, which is the main way it perceives the world, but it also has a bunch of other sensors, cameras, everything. The next is terrain mapping and exploration. So the same way that uh, we strapped a LiDAR sensor to a car, you can strap, uh, strap a LiDAR sensor or anything else to the drone and have it go map out an area. This can turn how we see the world from like a 2D top-down perspective into a more 3D perspective. Uh, the next is FPV drones. So this is where there's no autonomy involved. It's purely controlled by a human who puts on goggles and sees from the drone's perspective. This is great for like action shots and uh, that type of thing. And this is just the combination of things that you need to get it done. So you have a radio, the drone, and then the goggles. The next, I think, biggest use case is uh, photography and videography. But where this difference is or differs is these drones have a certain level of autonomy to them. Uh, so, for example, uh, 
depending on the manufacturer or whatever, they can uh, assign, I'm not assign, give the drone commands that uh, whoever's operating it can tell it to follow. The first one being a follow command. So you can have a beacon, whether it be like a cell phone or some other piece of technology, and you can tell the drone to maintain a safe following distance. While doing that, it'll also avoid obstructions and take the safest route. Uh, the next is, or they've become popular recently, it's the drone light shows. Now, this is an impressive feat just because keeping track of so many different flying things in a 3D perspective is difficult. And this is where I think it's a law in America where any registered drone has to have a remote ID attached. And all that this means is it allows drones to communicate with one another. And that's what allows these light shows because now they can uh, kind of uh, avoid collision just by keeping track of other drones' relative positions. Uh, the next, or I think last that I have, it's pretty cool. It's a farm in South America. They use drones and like a drone hub for uh, picking apples. So this is a nice combination of technology because here they use image recognition to detect the apples. And then a few other ways of actually like, or of having the worker drones go and collect them. Uh, and I don't have a slide for it, but my last, I just want to tie back to uh, the, the B example from the beginning. But we've progressed a uh, long ways in terms of drone technology, but I think we still have a ways to catch up. So using, uh, using bees as kind of like a, a goal or point to reach, I'm hoping that one day we can have drones that have as smart you know, uh, collision avoidance, uh, task completion, and like self-maintenance as bees. But yeah. That's my speech about drones. <laughs>